Hi, I'm going to run through the startup of the M11 MAK from a cold chip condition to first firing the boiler. Uh, this is going to lead us towards our midterm test, uh, which is going to be to run through this scenario. What I've done is I've laid out a number of milestones that you need to accomplish, and this is what we've been working towards over the last few weeks of the class. Um, so what we're going to do is start from a cold chip using the emergency generator, which is going to lead to a diesel generator running and eventually to the point of firing the boiler on diesel oil. Uh, I'm going to walk through the steps today and um, you can use this video to, to help prep uh, in order to prepare for completing this task. Uh, so I have the simulator up and running. Um, and uh, first step that I'm going to do is go to the electric power plant and I'm going to turn on my emergency generator. I do that by clicking on the auto button which is going to allow the emergency generator to decide to start and then eventually is going to engage its breaker. So I don't want to touch anything at this point, I'm going to let it do its thing. Once it has connected uh, I can see that it is up and running and it is supplying power along the emergency bus bar to uh, a series of components. So I have an emergency operating panel which has some diesel generator lube oil pumps, seawater pumps, bilge pumps, uh, start air compressors and some other components as well. Um, so I'm going to make use of the seawater auxiliary pump and the start air compressor too and the diesel generator lube oil pump in order to get my diesel generator started which is going to allow me to use components in order to start up the boiler. So uh, first place that I'll go to is going to be the diesel generator number one and observe that in order to get this running I will need my start air system up and running. So if I backtrack here what I'll see is that my start air system um, pathway is going to come back and I will supply it with my start air compressor number two. Before I get this thing started what I want to do is establish cooling water. So I will need to open up this valve to get water through the after cooler on the air compressor number two. However when I open up that valve you see there's no flow. So I'm going to have to backtrack to page number nine in order to try to establish flow. So first thing I'll do is create my pathway. I'm going to start from the sea chest. I'll go through pumps, uh, inlet valve into the air compressor system, it exits and then eventually makes its way overboard. So opening up that overboard discharge valve. Looks like my pathway is okay, so I'm going to start up my air, uh, my auxiliary seawater pump. You can see we're starting to get some flow, building some pressure. If I go to my air compressor page, what I'll see is that I am getting some cooling water flow through my after cooler. So at this point, it's going to be safe for me to operate this air compressor without it risking overheating. So my pathway comes through. Uh, I'm going to fill up one of my tanks. So if I choose to fill up my start air number two tank, I'm able to turn on my start air compressor number two. It is now supplying air and my start air tank number two or receiver is starting to increase in pressure. I'll need at least 15 bar of pressure in order to get my diesel generator started so I'll have a little bit of time before that's able to to get up to that level. Before I leave this page because at this point I could go and start working at my diesel generator number two or sorry diesel generator number one um, what I want to do is ensure first of all that my temperature is under control 
and it looks like it's not rising. It's actually quite low, so that's good. The cooling water is doing its job. And what I'll do is I'll open up pathways to my diesel generator one. Um, before I leave the page, I just want to make sure I haven't opened up any drains that are causing me to lose any air. Um, and generally what I want to do is only fill up one tank at this point uh, so that it doesn't take twice as long to fill up the double reservoir of air or the twice tanks that are twice as large once I'm trying to fill up two. So off to diesel generator number one. Diesel generator number one has a number of systems. I'm going to start with the lube oil system. So down here at the bottom, what I have is my lube oil system. Uh, if my lube oil level is low, I can add in lube oil. I may want to target about 50% as my lube oil level. So if it is a little low, we could add some. If it's high, we can remove some oil using this valve and our pump. Um, the pathway for oil, what I want to do is I want oil to be circulating into this engine before I turn it on. So I'll need to open up a valve through one of the filters. And then I will be using the manual control on the lube oil pump. When I turn it on, you can see my flow is increasing and my pressure is increasing. If I'm okay with where my level is, then I'm okay to turn off my makeup valve and I will stop filling up the tank. Uh, I have two other systems, so I have my feed water system, okay, and uh, sorry, my cooling water systems. So I have two valves to open up on the seawater side. My freshwater side is okay. If I need to add water to the expansion tank, I could. Um, my level appears to be okay. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do is if I look at my cooling water system, right now the, the cooling water system is set so that 100% of the flow goes through the cooler. What that's going to mean is that my engine is never going to get up to operating temperature when it's running and I want it to be at a certain temperature. It looks like cooling water around 65 degrees. So I got two options which is either to manually adjust that valve so that it's bypassing the cooler um, or else the easier option at this point is to make sure that this guy is in automatic control. And When it does you can see this valve changes position so now some of it is going to go through the cooler and some of it is going to bypass and go directly to the to the um, diesel generator. I also have my diesel oil pump and fuel system so I'm going to start from my source diesel oil service tank and then work my way through open up the valve to get to the diesel generator one and two that brings me to here I've got a valve and then I have a valve as well in front of the filter I can confirm that my pressure is now above 15 which is the target for it to be able to start and I can start up my diesel generator. I'm watching my speed and hoping that that stabilizes around 1200. If it does not, you may have to reset a trip. If you had a trip that was showing, you may have a problem with your lube oil system or you may have a problem with your diesel oil system. Before we walk away, what we want to do is verify that we do have flow of diesel oil. We do have flow of lube oil. We have flow of cooling water. We have flow of seawater. Our temperature controller is in auto. And our lube oil pumps are configured correctly. Right now I have this guy as manual. Uh, however, what I want to do is turn him into auto mode to make sure that he is operating 
as needed. So if the diesel generator starts to turn itself off, then this motor will turn itself on in order to keep lube oil pumping. A couple things I want to do before I walk away is just make sure my fill valve is closed, my drain valve is closed for the lube oil, and my fill valve is closed for the expansion tank. Normally I'd want to make sure that I'm up to operating temperature, so at the 65 degrees before putting a load on this generator. Um, however, we're going to jump ahead um, and connect it early um, for the sake of time. So to connect the breaker, we're going to go to 070. This is our diesel generator 1, which is now running. And in order to connect them, I'm going to engage my breaker. When I do that, you'll notice my breaker is going to connect in and my diesel generator, uh, the emergency diesel generator breakers are going to switch positions. So first this breaker dropped in and then these switched positions. Ultimately what that did is it created a uh, situation where the diesel generator is now supplying to all kinds of different components and what I'm going to need are things like my combustion air fan on the boiler, um, service air compressor, um, so I'm going to turn on my breakers here, give myself access to all the electrical components. So where just as a summary we've started the cold ship using the emergency generator we got compressed air using are uh, used to start diesel generator number one diesel generator one is now connected to the electrical bus so I have two more things that I want to clean up before jumping over to the boiler so air compressor number two and the service air compressor operational cooling water setup and auto operation. So uh, let's go back to our air compressor page and clean up that before we move on. Okay, so first of all, I'm still building up pressure. Uh, I target about 30 inside of either of the start air receivers, so I'm still on my way to getting there. Um, what I want to be able to do is automatically turn that compressor off. So when he gets up to the pressure that he wants to be, I won't have to manually come and turn him off. Um, I want it to be automated. That automation happens on page 102. So let's go there and just take a look. So power chief pump compressor control. And my start, start air compressor number two is on. And what I'm going to do is turn him into auto mode. And by turning them into auto, now the control system is deciding when to turn on or turn off the air compressor. So we don't have to make that decision anymore. In addition, what I want to do is I want to set up my service air compressor. And we'll explain what the purpose of this is, um, but it's very important on the ship. So in order to do that, so I'm going to mimic the same actions. I'm going to turn on my cooling water. I'm going to create pathway. I'm going to turn on my service air compressor. Make sure it's cooling. Make sure it's building pressure. Make sure it's flowing. And then I'm going to create my pathway through the system to control air. And we can see we've got a little bit of pressure building. I'm going to jump back and switch my service air compressor over to auto. And now he's going to also decide when to turn himself on or off as needed. So my cooling water system, my air compression system are all under control and are operational. Um, let's go and look at the boiler. So the boiler is two pages, page 80, 80, and 83, 83. 
First thing that we want to do with our boiler is make sure that we have water in it. So the water is shown here by the level. Um, right now it's negative 262, which means it is 262 millimeters below my normal operating point. If it was positive, it would mean it was above. Um, and what that means is that my target for water in the boiler is going to be zero. Right now I'm low. Um, the low cutoff for the boiler happens at negative 300, so I'm pretty close to that level. So I want to add in some water into the boiler. In order to add it, I have three components. I have a pump, which will allow me to push water in, and I have a valve that restricts how much water can be delivered by the pump, and I have a controller that decides how to open and close that valve. The valve is actuated by compressed air, and so that's the reason why we need it to have control air available in order to be able to open and close that valve. So without that, we won't be able to open this valve and allow water into the boiler. So in order to open it, now that I have some control air available, I can click on the bottom value manual. Um, maybe I open up that valve to 50%, and you can see it's starting to open, and turn on a feed water pump. The pump is building pressure and creating some flow, and my level is starting to increase in the boiler. I want to target around zero, however there is quite a bit of time delay between when I turn off the system and when it finally stops filling. So maybe around uh, negative 150, uh, you want to set your valve back to 0% or fully closed. And what we'll see is that this valve is now starting to close and the flow of water into the boiler is starting to stop. You can hover over the valve if you want to see its position. So 10%, 7%, 5%, um, making its way to a closed position. As you can see, I'm getting pretty close to my target of zero. When I do get close to my target of zero, um, and I have my valve closed, um, it's safe for me to put my level control into automatic mode. If you happen to overfill the boiler, uh, you can drain it. Um, when you go to drain it, what you'd want to make sure is that you're not pumping new water in, so make sure your pumps are off. Um, if you are still below, then you can always manually open that valve to add some water in. Ultimately what I want to do though is get into a case where my level is automatically controlled at about zero. Um, plus or minus 100 is what my specifications are. With the level controller on auto and feed water pump number one on. Okay, so last thing we have to do, boiler firing on diesel oil. The boiler page is over here, and we have two different fuels we can use, heavy fuel oil or diesel oil. Um, we are going to use diesel oil, so uh, I need to make sure my boiler can get diesel oil. So from the service tank through, we have a valve to open up to the boiler. Um, I have a pump to turn on, although I don't want to turn it on just yet. I've got a pathway to create which either makes its way to the boiler or else overflows and goes back to the tank. So I want to make sure this valve is aligned to go back to the diesel oil tank. Um, and I'm going to turn on my fuel oil supply pump, which is going to create flow and it means that my boiler can get fuel once it demands it. 
We have two other pieces that happen. So we have the fuel side. We've also got the air side. So we have our fan. We gave it electricity on page 7-4. Um, and this is going to deliver air into the, into the boiler. We also have a controller, and what the controller does is it decides how much total air and fuel. So what is the firing rate? Um, sometimes you may have a low and high fire rating for boilers. Um, in this case, what we have is 0 to 100% output. So if I want it to boiler to fire at 75% of its capacity, uh, I could adjust the manual value to 75, and that would dictate a certain amount of, of heat input into the boiler. When I heat it up, uh, initially I want to do that at as low of a firing rate as possible to minimize stress and damage to the boiler. So I'm going to make sure that I'm down at 0% for my, my um, uh, burner output. Um, with the pressure controller in place, electricity to the fan and fuel circulating, uh, I'm able to start up my burner uh, make sure when you're doing that that you don't have your heating cables on. Uh, those are only used for the heavy fuel oil. Diesel oil doesn't require those cables on. So I hit start and it goes through first of all a purge process and you can see that the flap just opened up on the fan and it's blasting through a significant amount of air through the combustion chamber. Firebox now the flap is closing, fuel valves just opened up, and I just established a flame. My burner seems to be stable and operating correctly, and that was the fi final milestone for me to reach. So I've worked my way through, and I've got all my milestones met and I've completed this test successfully. Uh, at this point, what you could do is call over your instructor to check your work, um, and then you see that you have successfully completed all of the milestones.